Hello everybody, this is Andy, and welcome to episode 16 of Celestial Journey. And today, I think we might take it kind of slow, don't take my word for that, but um, I have changed a couple things about this pack. In fact, that's completely incorrect, I've changed one thing about this pack, and that is I've added the mod or Thalmic Additions Reconstructed. This adds a couple of new types of jars, some other stuff, but most importantly, as I talked about last time, it adds V seeds. And why is this not? Oh, that doesn't link up. It adds V seeds. These guys. It is one for each type of V. The mod also adds a couple new types of V, but we won't actually need those, I don't think. Um, but we will use these to generate our essences in order to do auto crafting with the runic altar which i've also gone ahead and crafted in between episodes we had everything for this it just needed to take some time because it requires four full mana pools to craft in order to make that process slightly crafter or start slightly faster i added these um gaia mana spreaders to this along with potency lenses and it's shot four mana pools into this thing in like two or three minutes so I've gone ahead and cleared out this little area right here, uh, kind of where we're doing our magic stuff. The tech stuff goes over there. Uh, we want a decently sized area for this runic matrix. One, we're going to need a lot of, oh, I'm going to actually need one more arcane pedestals because one has to go in the center. Um, we are going to want a lot of space for this because we don't want to be squeezing in our automation for the runic altar. And yes, we are going to have to automate the runic altar unless we want to be incredibly unhappy and that will require a, an entire applied energistic subnet, which is going to be a lot of work. So I do want one, maybe two more blood altars. So let's go ahead and shove it on the same line as this over here with just a bunch of space. This is the structure for the runic altar. You need arcane stone like this, I think. And I did that incorrectly. You need to place the runic matrix on top like that. And the thing is activated with a little bit of Salus Mundus, which I, I don't actually have to go to my terminal in this pack. I just have an, um, a terminal in my inventory. And you just toss it on there, and it should activate the thing. Yep, and then you can place the arcane pedestals around it. We are going to have a seven by, or a seven on each side arcane pedestal setup. So that should be just like this. And let me make that extra pedestal, and I'll be right back. Now, in order to make the actual caster's gauntlet, we're going to need a thermometer, which requires weak activation crystals which require lava crystals, which require fire water, which requires hooch, which requires a couple of vats. And that's what I'm working on right now because we need the caster's gauntlet to activate our runic matrix. So what we're gonna have here, um, I don't think hooch is useful for anything else. Let's go ahead and check that really quickly. It can be turned into a generator. Um, it can be turned into a rocket fuel, but I don't think rocket fuel is used for anything unless we wanna use it for our reactor. I assume that makes it produce more energy at the cost of efficiency. Um, but for now, let's just shove the hooch directly into a second vat and it won't accept. I need to pull. Yep. And I need a capacitor and we should just be able to supply it with, um, what does hooch use in order to make the fire water, redstone, and blaze powder. And there we go. We just make a pattern that says bucket turns into a fire water bucket. We shove it into this interface connected to the fluid tank here. We set this to push pull. And just like that, we should be able to say, I want fire water and request like 10 of them. And it'll shove the buckets in there, automatically fill the fire water buckets and shove them back into the ME system for us. And this thing will just produce forever. All of these resources are entirely automated. Water obviously is free. Uh, potatoes and sugar are being farmed. Potatoes are now up there. Sugar is being farmed in the Agricraft farm. Blaze rods are in there. Um, redstone is just, we have so much of it, I don't have to worry about it. Eventually we'll make this seed. And yeah, and you know, the hooch comes from here. So yeah. We can make as many fire crystals as we want. I'm pretty sure they're not actually used up in crafting recipes, so we only need a couple. But 
Yeah. Also, I feel like there might be an issue to this thing, because I'm not seeing any drops. There we go. I've uh, managed to fix the issue uh, somehow when I, I broke this over here when I was playing with my uh, copy and paste gadget. I need to fix it at some point. Um, but it pasted blocks all over the hole for things to go down. So we haven't been getting drops for a little while because mobs just haven't been getting hit, killed. Uh, they'll reach the mob cat limit and they just sit in there. But now we should be gaining things like blaze rods once again. And eventually this thing will back stuff itself. In fact, it looks like it already has. Oh yeah, it already... Oh, there's a thumbcraft effect. I thought I set my warp entirely to zero. Um, but I guess you still do get them occasionally. And for now, I can just take the blood orb out of this blood altar to do some crafting. It should be pretty quick. This is actually a pretty low tier craft, I think. Wait, maybe it's not. Tier 3? Oh, it takes a lot of LP though, 25,000. I mean, that should be pretty quick. We have a couple of um, speedruns, but, you know, we're not running low on LP by any means. All right, there is the thermometer, and here is the caster's gauntlet. Eventually, I'll make, like, goggles revealing and stuff. We will want those eventually. Um, I just said eventually twice. It's a little late. I'm a little tired. Um, but for now, this will be good. Uh, we do want some stabilizing items. We're going to want a couple of different types of skulls. Um, did I just phase through that pillar? Does this pillar exist? Why did I just phase through it? Anyways, uh, we're going to need some skulls, maybe some candles, and a couple of other things in order to stabilize our altar. And actually, I need the goggles goggles, goggles of revealing right now. And let's go ahead and shove them on the head. Um, yeah, warp effects are angry with me for cheating in the warp. I'm not really sure what's happening. Not sure what's going on outside the world. Um, not sure what's going on here either. What the heck? Uh, anyways, let's go back over to this, and what we should be able to see is the stability, and that doesn't look very good. Huh. I removed some things that I thought might be causing some instability, and it turns out they weren't. It's just things give less stability than I thought they did. That's perfectly fine. Um, I was using these wooden shovels to make a little bit of alchemical brass because this requires a little bit of alchemical brass, but we don't need that anymore. Well, actually, I'll need more here because we do need to make some stabilizers. Um, we should probably just do this now, shouldn't we? I'm also going to need a little bit of thaumium, which is made with vibrant alloy, and apparently mana lenses are a great source of precantatio, so we're going to do mana lens, three dirt, and three of these, and apparently we have a bit of an issue. Uh, oh, it worked that time. Maybe I just didn't do it correctly. I don't know. Eight is, I think, all we need. Let me get some slivers so I can clean this up. And we should be on our way to making stabilizers. And this wasn't quite as bad as I thought it would be. We need four stabilizers for the four sides of the altar. I already put a couple of inlays down. As you can see, you need to connect them all up. Um, I believe the redstone wiring runs through the arcane pedestals, but we need to put Stabilizers here, and I think they begin to emit their redstone signal on their own as soon as I have them all. Yes, yes, as you can see, they're starting to puff out little things. Um, that does something, probably. Not entirely sure. Maybe it releases flux, maybe it cleans up flux. I have no idea. Um, but I do know I need to put a couple blocks of slate down here because I messed up the floor and I'm not going to need to go down there for quite a bit of time. So uh, I was going to make another imaginary time block for something we're going to do later in this episode. Um, it's actually the, those V-Pod things. I was going to try and set up a couple of those, probably not the entire thing today, but a couple of them. Um, and I realized, what's going on with my conduits? Hello? This episode's been weird so far, I feel like. Um, I, I, I'm, I don't have enough emeralds to make an imaginary time block right now. I have everything else except for emeralds uh, because I'm spawning things now. I just need 20 more. I can craft everything, but uh, this guy will now make emeralds for me. He gives me one emerald per five note blocks every... What is that? 30 seconds or so? Um, 
right now I'm going to have to wait, but eventually this will be much, much faster than we need emeralds, at least until we can get the emerald seed. So I'm just doing two mechanical crafters to craft the wood into blanks, and then this into note blocks. The note blocks get shoved into here. All right, um, it's been a minute since you last saw me. I have done a couple of things. Um, I have made more seeds like thomium and alchemical brass. And um, actually, before I show you this, let me switch over to a creative mode world and show you the thing that I've come up with for the V production with this new mod. All right, so here we are in a creative world. This is a test world. I just kind of set up a basic applied energistic system and gave myself all of the necessary terminals. As you can see, I have a little bit of Essentia set up, and that is this system right here. I have two different sides to this. This side is going to be, or this side is a showing of the early game Essentia setup that I'm going to go for. This will be the late game Essentia setup, which will utilize... I think these are void metal essential smelters. We're going to be using thomium ones. Um, these will utilize the Mythmanite jars, which is the highest tier jar. These ones will utilize, utilize the void fortified jar, which is a mid tier jar. It holds about 500 aspects. Um, so what we have here is a plant interactor. Oop, that was not what I wanted to do. Give me one of those back please. Uh, what we have here is a plant interactor. This thing will harvest this plant when given power, which is being done, is now not being done. Jeez, I keep breaking things. I need to remember that I am um, a god in this world. Uh, when given power, it harvests this, and it shoves it in here through item conduits. And then from here, we extract into the void metal, void metal essentia smeltery, with elementum in it. Uh, I don't know if we have to use elementum. Maybe we can just use coal for this process. Who knows? Um, but this one I'm using here because it's a very good fuel. Uh, it will extract into here and it will throw two in at a time from here when it is not given a redstone signal. Uh, a redstone signal is supplied by this. It compares the fullness of this jar, and when it's full, or actually when it gets to 250 V, it sends out a signal of 15, and that gets sent over to here to turn off this conduit. With the signal of 15 at 250, and with two little guys in here, this will be full, and it will allow this fortified jar to entirely fill up um, basically just off the backlog. You get a little bit extra, that can sit in there, no issues, a little extra in there. As you can see, it's a little volatile. It doesn't always give the same amount, but that's kind of all right. Over here, we have a bigger system. This is the exact same setup, but since it has a Mythmanite jar, we're gonna wanna do this because we're gonna need a lot of some aspects. Um, so 4,000, I think, will be enough. Um, what we have here instead, we have the three Arcane Olympics. Arcane Olympics are incredibly expensive. So we're gonna use three of them in the later setup, one in the initial setup. Um, and then we have a basic drawer. Basically, what I'm allowing this thing to do is to backlog with 10 stacks of each type of V-Pod. They will then get sent into here, and and this conduit gets locked from sending things into the drawer when this thing hits 250 V. With a backlog of 10 stacks, it will get to around 38, 3900 V um, in the jar. And uh, once we drain it, you know, we can kind of just keep filling it up. Now, maybe these systems aren't perfect, but they should be good enough to carry us through the game. And let me hop back into our world and show you what I've set up so far. So we already had the runic matrix right here. I added a temporary essential smeltery to get the aspects we need because this void fortified jar requires some void metal. Um, I need 50 void metal pieces to finish the setup, and this is the initial setup of the thing. Um, it's going to require a lot of imaginary time blocks, 49 more of them in my current uh, version of this, and I don't. I think this is going to be the final version too. It's just going to take a while to get the resources necessary to craft those. The main issue is Wither Skeleton's skulls uh, turning into nether stars. Um, I'll probably solve that problem sometime soon, um, but yeah, the main addition here is that I've moved the them further apart so we can expand them to the late game setup quite easily and we have sprinklers here to increase the speed at which they work because i can't have 
imaginary time blocks quite as close as in the uh, creative world. There are a total of 50 aspects in this version of Thongcraft. There are a total of 50 plant interactors and going to be a total of 50 plants here and a total of 50 essential smelteries here. Um, so yeah, it's just up to me to set them up. It's going to be hours of crafting, hours of placing, and hours of configuring conduits. Um, I don't know if I'm going to finish this today, but as I begin to need different types of Essentia, I, I will probably begin to automate them and just make the seed. As you can see, I've made the Metalum seed just here as like a test to make sure this thing all works. Um, I haven't made any V yet because I do want this void for a fortified jar before I do anything. We have all of the stuff necessary for the other jars. It's just that void metal that's blocking us. As you know, uh, void seed with a little bit of this stuff will turn it into the thing that we want. Let me also show you something else that's pretty fun and um, be scared. Uh, well, I guess be scared, but also don't be scared. I kind of made this ginormous rift right here by throwing a bunch of compressed... Are you dying? Yeah, he's dying. Uh, by throwing a bunch of compressed cobble into this crucible. This rift is going to be collapsed, and that's how you get the void metal seeds. We need to cause out a collapser. Collapser, this is the one thing we need to make by melting the Essentia normally, and then we can, you know set up the automations for it. So the recipes for the causality collapsers aren't actually that bad. As you can see, I melted a bunch of stuff and made myself eight of them. Now I have 10, uh, or sorry, I made myself 10 of them. Now I have eight because I accidentally, in the process of doing that, spawned two rifts in my base, which is bad, but they don't appear to be reforming. So it looks like they were just baby rifts and I think we'll be fine. Um, yeah, so let's go over to the big boy rift and collapse that guy. Hopefully nothing bad has happened over here. These chunks shouldn't be loaded most of the time, and I'm hoping this will give me a ton of void seeds. The other two, or the two in my base, gave me five each. Let's see how many this one gives me. And he's going to take a second to close. Jeez. Okay. Come on. Thank oh my god. 15. That's crazy. Okay, I'm gonna close seven more and I'll be right back. All right, there we go. I ended up with just over two stacks of void seeds, which is pretty good. And I got two of these primordial nodules, which I think um, are basically primordial pearls, but that they've been uh, used up a couple of times. You can't craft them. Can you craft the primordial pearl? No, I think this is how you have to get Primordial Pearls. I think two is actually incredibly lucky as well. So that's pretty good. Uh, let me turn these guys into Void Metal Ingots. That's pretty simple. I just need to melt down a couple of these Metallum siege Seeds, actually. Okay, guys, it's been a minute. I've set pretty much everything up over here. Actually, I don't remember how much you saw from over here, but I have added the channels. We have storage buses on these guys. I have two more aspects in here, and we're pretty much ready to go. I made uh, some void fortified jars. I can actually go ahead and make some more. I just, they take so much V to craft that I do need to do them in batches because... Void, fortified jars. Yeah, as you can see, 142V, I can make 16 at a time. Uh, I need 50, so that is slightly more than 16. But that over, oh, also I have these uh, blood magic rituals up here, cleaning the flux from the area, because I did, you know, spawn a couple of griffs, or a couple of rifts, and we don't want to be doing that over here. I don't know if these have a max, or these convert the flux into demon will, I think. These are the rituals of eldritch will. Um, I don't know if there's a maximum amount of demon will that can be in a chunk. I'm hoping the answer is no, so I can just let these run forever with no issue. But the answer may very well be yes, and we may have some problems later on. But uh, for now, this should be good. I only have three plants going. And these ex actually are the three plants you need in order to make the steel seeds. Do I need steel seeds that bad? No, but um, I do want them because they're used in stuff like molybdenum. Molybdenum. Uh, as you can see, this takes a block of steel per. And it takes a while to craft those when you have to, you know, craft every single piece of steel in uh, 
you know, by itself. But more than anything, I just want the steel seeds in order to test this system. I have added a recipe for the steel seeds in here since it's an infusion recipe. And this is a crazy looking system. Um, I know it's not quite as compact. This is the logic for the system. And there's some other logic over here and then chests and all this kind of stuff. I am going to attempt to explain what's going on here, but I would recommend you check uh, the video. I believe it's episode 22, Odds and Ends, by Jimmy Chow, um, where he creates this system. This is, you know, basically an exact copy of his system. It would have taken me 20 hours of work in order to come up with something like this, and I doubt I'd ever would have. So I just kind of stole his because it works perfectly well and uh, I think is a great way to automate the runic altar. So let's start over here. First things first, you have a chest, a normal chest. I don't think you can move the iron chests or gold chests or anything, so we have to use normal oak chests. I have them in different configurations so we can see when they get swapped, because they are going to get swapped. That's what's going on with these space chamber controllers here. Uh, you set up a space chamber just like this. Uh, the locks like in between don't matter. This is active, as you can see. You have to whack it with a wrench to activate it, but other than that, it will be fine. You need to put a space chamber card in here. Just click it on the controller and shove it in here, and it will swap the block right here with the block behind the builder. And basically what we're doing is every time, or uh, whenever, I think with the, wait, these probably do have to be on blocking mode, or we're gonna come into issues. Um, basically, Every time items get shoved into here, it's going to send a comparator signal over here, which is a little bit of logic. I'm using the cyan channel to send into this logic gate, and then that is getting sent out of here on the brown channel into this counter. These are going to count the state of the machine. We have three separate states, four lamps, because this is just um, a lamp that tells you if the automation is on or off. If this automation is off, uh, this basically will not work on its own, and you will have to manually infuse items. Um, but here, we're pulling out on the brown channel, shoving into the brown channel. Here on the counter, this will advance the state by one. Turn off this light, because at uh, state zero, the uh, counter emits a redstone signal. Um, on state one, it will, you know, not emit a redstone signal. And then that will, I believe, turn, wait. Yeah, yeah, it'll turn off this and then we'll advance the state of every single thing here by one. And then we'll go into state two. State one is sort of just like a waiting stage. Um, it's, you know, it's the inputs in there being detected, and then all of that activates the next stage, which is the really big stage in reality. Um, this is where you distribute the input from this chest here over onto the arcane pedestals for infusion. Um, the main parts of this are you have a counter, once again, that advances the stage. It's on two. So when it advances to um, zero, which is the next stage, it gets the tick from over here. Um, it advances the stage by one, sends a redstone signal to this lamp, but more importantly, also to this sequencer on the gray channel, as well as the builder on the gray channel. This builder swaps these chests and all of its contents, and all of the items get sucked out into the arcane pedestals on an import bus. These uh, storage buses on the arcane pedestals are configured, um, you know, trying to keep the symmetry of the system. So like here we have 98. I, I started at 100. So we have 98. Over here we probably have 97. Yep. And then over here we'll have either 99. Yep, 99. And 90 or 100. Wait. Yes, yes, that's right. Um, and then over on the corners here, you'll have the lower ones in the 70s and 80s. The reason we're pulsing this sequencer right here is because it's going to send another signal on the brown channel in order to advance the counter by one. And that will light up this lamp and tell us that we are beginning crafting. Um, when this lamp lights up on the yellow channel, it also sends a signal to here. Um, this is sort of the... This is the logic gate that sort of, you know, ends the craft. Uh, but we'll come back to this in a second. Since we're sending a 
signal on the yellow channel that will also send a redstone signal to this mechanical user that I have taught how to use the caster's gauntlet using the Tome of Knowledge Sharing, and it will start the infusion. Uh, this is all in theory. Once again, I haven't tested it. We're going to test it together. Once the infusion starts, you know, it will go, it'll do its thing, it'll suck up all the items, it'll take however long it needs. Uh, the output will get extracted. Oh, one second. All right, I don't exactly remember where we are, but I know I was talking about the mechanical user activating this, and then once the crafting is completed, obviously the center item turns into a different item. Um, we are going to need to configure this storage bus to only hold very specific items that we want to go into the center. I have it set on the highest priority, but I don't know if that actually means anything. Um, I think the ME system always puts, puts the top left item in the recipe first. So like if our tier one crafting seed was in this square in the recipe, it would always go into the chest first and therefore it always get extracted first. But let's not, let's not play games here. So what I want to do since we're going to test with the steel seed is to, nope, not put my crafting terminal in there. That would be bad. Um, Put the tier 4 crafting seed in here, and then we want to configure this to only extract the steel seed, and put that in there, and this should allow it to do the entire process. I'll remove these filters eventually soon, um, and replace them with things we actually want to craft over and over, because that's mainly what this is for, things we're going to need to craft over and over. Um, but once the craft is finished, once the steel seed is detected, it will get extracted, and put into this chest right here, which has a comparator on it. It is detecting if there are items in the chest. If there are, which means crafting has finished, we're sending a signal to here. We're sending a signal to the sequencer. It sends a two second pulse in order to activate the conduits on the inside here. Um, they are extracting when there is a signal on the purple channel of these redstone conduits. So, you know, or the, I'm using the purple channel here to send a signal. All the way around and this will allow us to clean up any items that are left over like primordial pearls or uh, buckets or whatever things don't get consumed in crafts usually all of those things are extracted on the blue conduit channel shoved into the ender chest shoved back into the system and once that two second pulse is done the uh this is this uh import bus which is on our main network it's connected to this right here a p2p tunnel off the main controller um this turns on because you have a redstone card in here along with some acceleration cards uh by exporting the signal on the white channel which is coming from here um this yeah once this sequencer is done it will you know begin extracting items putting them back to the ME system and completing the craft. This white signal also comes all the way back over here to finish off this, you know, this um, AND gate, A, B, and C will all be lit up. That will cause these sequence or these counters because they're sending another pulse on the brown signal, signal or brown channel to increase by one and reset to the initial state. So let's go ahead and watch this in progress. I'm going to order the steel seeds. We should have all the Essentia being provided by the Essentia infusion provider. Um, why is this not, is it just not updating? It's probably just not updating. Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah, you have to click on it to update it. Um, yeah, all the Essentia is being provided by the Essentia infusion provider into the thing. It just has to be within like 16 blocks or something, and it'll pull the stuff in. Um, yeah, we have all three types of Essentia we need. Let's go ahead and order the steel seeds. Oh, I have the tier 4 crafting seed in my inventory. And here we go. Okay, so uh, we're already on to stage 2. The chests have flipped. Things are now going into here, and as you can see, infusion has begun. It's very stable, uh, because this is not a very unstable crafting recipe. Infusion is almost complete. This Things will all get sucked in, and eventually we will see this seed right here turn into the steel seed once it sucks in all the items. And any minute now, there we go, steel seed is completed. It gets extracted. All the extra items get extracted, because this is getting lit up and we're back at the initial state. And that's a complete automation of the infusion pedestal. Well, I guess it's not the infusion pedestal, it's the runic matrix. I think I mixed up. It's 
complete automation of Thomcraft infusion. All we have to do is throw the aspects down into here whenever you know I want to do some infusion. And yeah, I'm not gonna put all of the aspects I don't think um, out here just like one by one. I'll make the seeds as I need them for infusions. And if we fill up all 50 eventually, so be it. If we never do, that's fine. It means we didn't need all of the types of Essentia, but we have the slots available for them. So the steel seed is done. I can go place these void fortified jars really quickly and, you know, begin the process of slowly but surely completing, filling out some of the more expensive parts of this. Um, the reason I'm not doing it all at once is because I would need an incredible amount of nether stars and an incredible amount of um, uh, like alchemy stuff. And I just want to have better crafting before I try and make like 200 um, alchemical, what, are, what are you called? Alchemical constructs. That was quite a bit. I feel like we've done a ton of explaining and not a lot of on camera work this episode, but you like seriously don't want to watch this stuff. It just is hours of crafting and hours of placing things repetitively um, because all of these look exactly the same. All of this looked exactly the same. I just had to remember and not forget what like, you know, what priority I was on and something. Yeah, it, it sucked. Um, also, I believe 28 arcane pedestals is enough arcane pedestals to completely finish the pack. We won't need to add any more ever, which is really, really nice. Um, something I just don't have to worry about. In between now and the next clip, I'm going to make the Potentia and Perdicio seeds as well as uh, set up. Well, I probably won't set up a recipe for this. I'll just throw uh, the things in here and make the Yolorium seed because we need to make more power. And the way that we're going to do that is using the extreme reactors all right two really really cool things i've spent like six hours recording this episode so far and i just realized i'm about 10 minutes in and most of that 10 minutes is explaining this which is so so cool the other cool thing is that this system didn't work properly so i did have to add one extra thing it's incredibly simple but um you know, it had to be added in order for the system to actually be able to craft continuously. And uh, I'll show you this in action in just a second, but let me tell you what I changed. So right here, as we are, uh, this thing sends a two second pulse in order to extract all the items and all that kind of stuff at the end of the crafting process. I also send now a two second pulse to this comparator to turn it off and then right as this resets to state one this comparator is off which means it can trigger again send a pulse to the counter because the counter needs a pulse to be activated um and that will restart the crafting because if this comparator is always on uh it'll go back to this initial state but it won't restart the crafting if there are still more recipes to be crafted because you know it's not receiving a pulse. Um, I do need to make a couple of, I think, morphic resonators, and then we can just make some more causality collapses because that's the only recipe I have in the bank right now. Now, what we should see if I say order 10 of these is it's going to craft up everything that can be crafted. The morphic resonators are crafted in the arcane terminal over there, so they have to be crafted by hand. There is no automation for the um, things that require V to craft things that are crafted in the arcane crafting terminal or the arcane workbench. Uh, I need to fill in this hole. Give me a little bit of grass really quickly. This is where my crucible was. Um, probably a couple hours ago, I moved it over to here. So it'd be in the chunk that has this flux cleanup thing because, you know, I was throwing a bunch of stuff in here, making the seeds. Oh, I also did add the seeds in order to make the Eulorium as well as a couple other seeds. I think the gold seeds, no. Uh, Maybe it was just the steel, um, but I added a couple things and um, I set up the Alchema right here because Alchema is going to be used in a bunch of different recipes. Uh, I need to sleep, but uh, you know, I don't have the stuff for the Essential Smelter yet. In order to craft those more easily, I did actually change one other thing. Um, I added three more alloys to our passive production, Redstone, Energetic, and Vibrant, um, and these seeds are parts of the things that we'll need in order to fully passive that process. So we should begin seeing some crafting over here very, very soon. Is there anything in here? No, uh, this is just a terminal that shows the contents of all the storage buses, which is um, all of the stuff that's in the arcane terminal at any given time. Uh, I guess we just haven't finished crafting. Oh, because it, it chose to craft all of the niter first before it begins working on any elementum. 
Actually, did I even show this off? I added this little structure above that's where I'm going to put up to four of these thaumatoriums, which is where we do the crucible crafting, but we can automate it with the thaumatoriums. So, um, you know, very simple. Put a recipe in here, the items get shoved into the thaumatorium, then they get put into this chest and extracted out. Uh, since the thaumatorium spits items out of its output, I think you do have to have a buffer chest here. Not entirely sure, maybe you can put a conduit directly out the front, but who knows. I did also attempt to make this look moderately nice. I'm considering, you know, spending a day or so whenever I just have free time and just like making this place look nice. These things can go now. I'm not doing any ore processing with them. I can literally just vein mine them out of existence. I just haven't gotten around to it yet because, you know, I'm lazy. Um, what, we, what we should see actually over here is that crafting should be beginning very soon. Unless we're having issues here. No, it doesn't look so. Um, oh yeah, we are crafting one of them now. And why isn't it crafting? We're in state three, apparently. Huh. That's interesting. We can force it back to... Actually, I don't know what's caused this. There are no items in here. Has it finished a craft of one yet? No, it hasn't finished any crafts yet. I'm going to cancel that craft. And we are going to try again and make sure this thing doesn't break. I'm hoping this thing is almost 100% of the time going to work, but I haven't tested enough to make sure, you know, that it will work 100% of the time. Let's give it a little uh, run through. If it works 10 times in a row, I'd be pretty happy. Oh, um, maybe I did something weird and I accidentally had it set to state three because that would mess up the system. Um, I actually, funny, funny story. Um, in order to make this, I actually did uh, download Jimmy's world, his final world, and took a look at this in person just so I could understand the redstone because I'm not super great with redstone and I, I've never played with the RF tool stuff like super in depth. I understand what all these blocks do now and I could set up the system on my own if you gave me, you know, an hour or two, but you know, I, I wanted to actually look at it properly, but we should be able to set that to the first input option, our uh, stage, order 10 of these. And yeah, as you heard right there, the chest has flopped and the infusion has started. Um, what you see actually is that the infusion numbers are slightly higher than they were before, uh, 53 instead of 50. That's because I did add some things down here. Hello, Enderman. Uh, the infusion speed stones. These increase the st instability a little bit, so the infusions are a little less stable. But, and as you can see, there's another one going in. And the items should be, yep, there. Okay, everything should seems to be working just fine. Um, the infusion speed stones increase the instability and decrease crafting time, but it also increased the amount of each, you know, little, uh, what are these called? Essentia types that the craft needs. The increase is just so small that it's kind of hard to care. I feel like I've talked about this thing enough though. It appears to be working as long as all these crafts work properly. I might just sit here and observe for a couple of minutes. We see it sucking up the items. We should see this chest flip. Yep. And things appear to be doing well. We're on to the third stage crafting and this mechanical user is automatically pressing the buttons. I do want to move this world over to a, a server incredibly soon because, you know, or actually, I don't think I can leave the ch chunk area right now because this is not chunk loaded. I don't think. Yeah, I'm running out of loaded chunks, so I'm going to have to add some chunk loading wards around this area and just claim these. Um, but I want to add this world to a server incredibly soon because uh, some stuff like these alloys, I want to always be background crafting. When I make imaginary time blocks, it requires like thousands of these red alloy ingots or redstone alloy ingots, and I will need thousands of them passively produced so I don't have to wait super long. The end game of this pack also requires an obscene amount of resources, so we probably want our agrocraft farm. Um, I'm going to redo this thing at some point because I think this is just kind of a bad design, so you know I want to do it better. Um, our, our farm will probably want to be running 24-7 just because of how many items we'll end up needing. Um, but for now, I'm going to take these crop sticks. I'm going to manually level up 
all of these seeds. Eh, let's do Eulorium right now. That's the only one I truly care about. Um, I, I, I also, maybe in this episode, we'll just kind of get away with it or get onto it. Um, we need to set up an automation using Ender Porcupines and stuff to automatically level up our seeds because single side spreading, as you know, is off in this pack. Um, it won't take that long to set up. It's just kind of obnoxious. Okay, so apparently someone forgot to make all of the uh, the recipes for this, you know. Wait, are there P2P tunnels over here? Hmm. Apparently I just never added them further down. Interesting. Um, apparently someone forgot to make these recipes like expert mode because these are all extremely simple recipes, at, at least at this point. Um, yeah, I literally just added them in over there and we were fine to go. Question is, where the heck do I put this reactor? I want it to be quite large. Um, did I ever set this up? I never storage bus this thing. I set this up specifically, whatever, we'll come back to it at some point. No, I should set it up right now. No, I don't want to do the P2P tunnel thing. Ugh. Um, maybe like on this hill over here? Mm, I don't, let me see how big I want it to be. So, all right. Here's what we're going for. Um, it's a 11 by 11 reactor, a reactor, 11 by 11 reactor, 9 by 9 internal. We're gonna alternate fuel rods just like this, and we will put enderium fluid on the top blocks right here to cool the reactor down. Uh, you don't have to do this, um, but you should because it makes the reactor not only run more efficiently, it makes the reactor run and generate more power. So we want to do that. The main problem being uh, my dark steel is hurting right now from all this Thawncraft stuff because this Thawncraft stuff requires an obscene amount of dark steel. Like each of these essential smelters is like 20 pieces of dark steel, 20 blocks of dark steel, sorry. Um, and these require six per. So uh, I can't really make a lot of them right now. So I'm just trying to fill in as much reactor casing as I can and uh, we'll see what happens. And um, the reactor is kind of finished now, and it looks pretty cool. The reason I uh, kind of didn't show you how this was actually working is mostly because I was, you know, kind of just doing this in the background while I was working on work and uh, crafting up the components because I actually did run out of dark steel. And I just kind of let this uh, idle in the background and craft the stuff that I needed in order to craft this. Uh, the one thing you need to keep in mind is you need a reactor controller. You need a couple of uh, ports to input fuel in. I'm using Yellorium, which is, you know, what we did all that for. Uh, not the only thing we did that for, but part of the reason we did that. And then you need an output port. And I'm just pulling my outputs into this ME interface and throwing them back into the ME system. So what we should see is we should be getting a bunch of cyanide. I've actually activated this guy and we have a buffer right here. This uh, capacitor is actually what's getting the input shoved into it. Uh, if you put a bunch of them together, you can pull in, uh, well, with eight of them, I can pull in 200,000 RF per tick. Uh, with the conduits alone, it's only 25,000. And then we can pull out of this capacitor on a bunch of different sides to, you know, be able to spread this energy throughout our base. 20,000 RF at a, is it 20,000? Yeah, 20,000 RF at a time um, from all these different connections. And the reason we need to do that is because this thing actually makes a huge amount of power. Um, a surprising amount of power, much more than I thought it would. Well, here, here's the thing. I either thought it would make significantly more power than this or significantly less power than this. But it's making about 77,000 RF per tick, um, which quadruples our current production, maybe a little more than quadruples. And we are at base producing about 100,000 RF per tick. The best part of this is that I am still gaining Eulorium, which means I could build probably two more of these. Um, I think this reactor, as you can see, it's burning 2.14, 2.15 millibuckets per tick. Um, this is a little bit confusing because this actually, um, it accounts for ingots in a different way than, you know, ingots normally are. As you can see, Eulorium, when you were to say, it turns out you can't melt it, but if you were to melt an ingot, it usually turns into 144 millibuckets of like fluid. Um, in this case, with this reactor, uh, 
each ingot is worth a bucket. So we use 2.5 ingots in this reactor per minute, which means, you know, we need to produce 2.5 ingots per minute. I, would re I produce three ingots every couple of seconds, and I don't even have imaginary time blocks on my farm yet. So we could, you know, quadruple the size of this thing and it'd be fine and we can get as much power as we want. This might just genuinely be enough power for most of the rest of the pack. And if we want to upgrade this, we can always make the turbine from extreme stream reactors as well. And that will give us a ton more power. Um, but yeah, that's the reactor right there. The only thing to keep in mind, I did I mention this already? You need to put the control rods on top of the reactor, like these things, the reactor things, um, or it won't form the multi-block. That's the only thing to keep in mind with this reactor. It can't overheat or anything like that. It just makes you RF if you give it fuel. I also think I made a little mistake earlier saying this episode was only 10 minutes long. Um, to explain this, I think I had my folder open while I was recording clips and it puts new clips all the way at the bottom when they're um, like just made instead of you know in the correct order they're supposed to be. So I only saw like 12 clips for this episode. I think this episode's somewhere around 40 minutes long so far. Um, I have a six, six gigabytes of recorded footage. Uh, that's usually 40, 50 minutes. So yeah, this episode's kind of long and I think I'm going to end it here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll come back. I don't think I did anything else in between. That I just made the reactor. Yeah, that's it. Um, and we'll come back. We will put more aspects into our farm over here and um, make life good. We will continue on towards the mid game of this pack and uh, begin preparing for what will eventually be the late game. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, maybe leave a like or something. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.